Hi there, my name is Trolls and welcome to SoundPaint. In this video, we're gonna take our new GBrass library for a spin. I prepared a variety of mini demos here, but before we get into it, let me just explain what GBrass is about. Imagine a traditional orchestral library and then imagine everything you're seeing on the hip hop and trap scene and merging those together. In other words, really examining what's going on on the professional scoring scene. We're seeing artists like Ludwig Göransson, Hans Zimmer, Lorne Balf, Wolfish, many other beautiful composers, Blake Neely, pushing the bar forward in terms of what you can do with brass. But at the same time, we're also seeing something happen in the world of hip hop and trap, using orchestral instruments in a completely new way that I haven't heard before. Artists like Apache comes to mind, really breaking the norms of what we can do with orchestral instruments. And that's what G-Brass is about. If you're looking for super smooth legatos or delicate trills, this is not the library for that. But if you're looking for the most badass, boldest, backstabby kind of brass, I don't know why I'm saying backstabby, that sounds awful, but it really has a stabby kind of approach to it. This is the library. Think staccatissimo, staccatos, macados, that sort of vein of things. But G-Brass is a big library as well. It's over 11,300 real-time samples. We're fortunate to be sitting on the largest recordings ever done in the history of sampling in terms of brass recordings. We've done sessions with 66 trombones. We've done sessions with 66 tubas. We had to fly people from 13 different countries together for that session alone. We bring them into halls and record them that way. But we're also fortunate to be sitting on a massive pool of prior brass recordings and then we did new custom recordings for G-Brass in terms of a massive Sambasso ensemble and a few other things. But this library is sort of divided into three different categories. We're going to go through them in this video here. We have natural brass, or should I say supernatural, because everything is so big and wild. We have combined brass with synthesizers, and then we have the synthesizer standalone. In SoundPaint, we are deeply committed to both deep sampling and ultra deep sampling of analog and vintage analog synthesizers, and that's exactly what we did for G-Brass as well. You have a variety of deep sample analogs that is augmenting and fully designed to augment your brass. So often when we're doing modern compositions, we'll be looking for our brass sounds and then we'll try to augment them with synthesizers and we have to find that as well. This is all in the library. You can separate them, you can play them together. So you both have organic brass, synthetic brass, synthesizers, hybrid in between. And, and why are we talking about this? Let's just get into sound paint and I have right in mini demos here. It's so much more fun to paint than it is to talk. So I'll see you in the door. We'll come back to that part. That's just a little example of what you can do with some of the more cinematic aspects of the library. But um, I have a lot of mini demos here and I just want to start out by playing some of the more sort of rhythmic, funky, hip hop, trap oriented kind of styles, just to get you familiar with why g -Press is so unfamiliar compared to traditional orchestral libraries. It's really of a different ilk. Check this demo out here. Let me just um, load the instance here. So you can hear that's not totally like normal brass. In fact, it has almost like a sort of tape kind of vibe to it. So that's another example of more sort of hip hop, almost synthetic kind of. And with sort of extreme action on the pitch bender. Um, every single patch is different in the library, doing different things. Uh, let me show you another one here. Mm -hmm. 
And if you notice here on the UI, you're gonna see that there's actually four active parts in this patch here. Let me just um, try to um, take the volume down on three of them so you can hear the sounds as we build them up. So this first part here is a synth, an analog synth, that's designed to have that sort of brassy character. <laughs> Here has sort of that brass wow kind of sound. Let's add another one here. That would be two synthesizers. So they have what you would typically characterize as brass in the world of synthesizers, but now we're gonna add what's called organic here. You can see the synths are called synths and the organic, meaning the full brass, are called brass organic here. Uh, let's add one more here. Then let's add this last part here as well. It's also cool because the entire register of your keyboard is covered, so there's infinite ranges going in the basses and all the way up to the highest of trebles. So. And we get further up if you want. It may not be necessary to compose too much in that particular range. Let me show you another one here. This is just a sort of solo example of what you can also um, do with G-Brass, just yet another patch, but um, just play it on its own here. Um, just to give you a more of sort of a naked sound, this is again an organic and a synth combined. The library goes deep, you know, you can go as deep as you want in the keys. It's not just the high range, but um, if you go down here. You can really hear the analog synths doing their action down there. Wow. And they can be cool to use, not just as sort of traditional brass, but motion picture like. It's funny, I always find myself moving my mouth when I do these things. I don't know if you guys do the same. Like, especially when it's like a wah-wah kind of thing, it's like. And you probably noticed as well that there is round robin going on, so when you do repeated notes, you don't get the same sound every time. Let's move on here to another example. If the inspiration wasn't obvious, um, look up Eminem somewhere in his past. You can hear that organic analog just lying an octave below the already octave-based brass. It's so heavy. Let me show another one here as well. Um, this is two different organic brass sections combined with one analog as well. It's really, really heavy as well. Um, I made a little sequence here with it as well.
this one is using our um, granular reverb, so it takes tiny sections, fractions of the sounds and create reverbs out of them in these sort of cascading rainfalls. It's really cool. It's um, added here on the mod wheel. <laughs> All right, moving on here. Even before I even play the brass, let me just try to highlight um, the rhythm section here. It's coming from our Red 522, one of my favorite drum machines. It's uh, the closest thing to a modern 808 I've ever heard. Really, really good. It's also deep sampled, just like the 808 as well, but it's a phenomenal drum machine. It's a little more raw and filmic in many ways. The brass pass we are listening to here is um, the low rider, and it's again a combination of analog and traditional brass combined. And you can see all run robin based. That's analog for you right there. So unstable in the sound. But you can hear it just aligns with the brass as well. Same kind of like gnarly wow 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 kind of sound. I just love that. Okay, uh, let's um, go on to the next one here. This next example is also using the 522 drum machine. It just really, really sits well in the mix, just punches through in the most delicious way. I thought that was kind of a weird, catchy kind of melody. This one is actually using two different instances of G-Brass combined because I just wanted that sort of fat kind of sound. Um, even though this is not a demo for uh, rhythm machines, let me just try to isolate the rhythm sequences here. I also used uh, natural hand claps. I just thought it's so... I just think it's so cool. It's such a nice kind of vibe to it. Um, when you play hand claps, always have them not sequenced on the grid. It gives that more sort of natural sound. But let me try to play here with the brass sounds here. There's two different ones. The first one is here. And the other one is this guy here. I made a little additional sequence here um, just to highlight one of the solo brass here. And when I say solo brass, it's probably not the right expression. The solo massive group, but solo because there's only one of them. And it's just to show that you can have fun with them as well. You know, almost like a lead synthesizer instead. Um, anyway, let's move on here to the next little mini demo. Let me just start here with the normal version first, then we'll do the explicit one. I just wanted to do something that was more sort of that sexy kind of hip hop style. I also added some ad libs to it. That's from a different library in Palindrome 2. Where my bad bitches at? And there's two elements here that makes this, for me, sort of breathe better. One is a bass from the Jupiter 8. And it's just... 
You can hear the noise. It's one of the things you don't get in emulations. The natural variations. And then there's a beautiful sort of unstable, um, slightly detuned 80s kind of vibe. Together it creates this. Where my bad bitches at? Let's move on here. I um, also have this one here. This is uh, more, we're gonna venture a little more into sort of the filming realm of things here. Check the sequence out here. That's actually an 808 doing the drums. It's a part of our 808 library. It just gives this phenomenal kind of snare kind of vibe. And of course, Cool thing about the library as well is that when you're down here, obviously you have bass, sort of brass, bass trombones, tubas, trombones, all that kind of normal stuff. But as we move up, you're getting more into the realm of French horns, traditional trombones, trumpets, piccolo trumpets. So you have the whole range and that goes for all the patches no matter what, that you always have the full spectrum of the entire brass sections at your fingertips. This next example is just a little bit of sort of traditional orchestral strings mixed with G-brass just to see what happens when you play ostinato and G-brass together. That's why I say it's not a traditional orchestral library. We're pushing the boundaries here of what you can do. It can work in sort of traditional stuff, but it's so potent. It almost dominates like the elegant strings. Uh, let me get um, to the very beginning here that we started. I play a little bit snippet on the beginning here. This is um, a little sort of demonstration again of all the filmic things you can do with the library um, using both palindrome, which is this new style, very new cinema style library full of ultra deep sampled analog synthesizers combined with the brass here. Just phenomenal. We have a bunch of different modern arps in it. We just wanted to nail that sort of modern arpeggiation sound. Check this one out. And one of the sweet ways to use a couple of libraries together is that when you do the brass here, I use the natural 808 underneath. It's a very, very common though secret trick when it comes to like film music. The 808 really fully services the brass in terms of creating those sort of more um, staple but fatter kind of subwoof kind of hits underneath it all. There's three layers of arps here. There's palindrome and then there is another palindrome and then there's, a, let me try to isolate them here, and then there's a Juno 6T just creating um, a lot of analog clicks. That's the Juno 60 and you can hear there's so many different clicks, so much analog goodness going on. That's the beauty of sound paint. It's not static, it's always alive, it's full of noise just like the real units. 
For me, that's so important. And also with the brass, that it feels real when you use it. We're not talking about emulations or simulations. This is deep sampled brass. And obviously in this um, sense here, it's deep sampled vintage analogs on top of that. Um, it just created a delightful kind of sound, more modern, even though it's vintage, but combined um, with very modern elements from G brass with old style vintage synthesizers, you get that sort of new school sound that I think we're all sort of looking for. Um, I have one more example here. I'm also more in the sort of filmic school of things. That's g -brass for you right there. This is what the library is about. It's not in a traditional orchestral library. It's more in that vein of really modern contemporary scoring. It covers you in the bass range in particular. I'm totally gonna use this forever when it comes to just nailing that big fat cinematic brass. I have my synthesizers that I already designed. I have my organic brass that's already designed. It's all just compiled into one. And obviously it works great for trap and hip hop as well. Those more rhythmic styles where you wanna use orchestral elements but you want them designed, sound designed to sit with that style of music as well. So this is what G-Brass is about. And one can wonder or ponder are we gonna do a G string? <laughs> it's probably, yeah, no, it's obvious. We're gonna do G string as well. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that's about yet, but probably something in the similar vein of things, trying to find that style between more modern top 40 oriented styles and what's happening on the contemporary soundtrack scene as well. So thank you so much for watching. This is SoundPaint. It's fast, furious, fun. It's all organic and alive. That's how we like it. Okay, take care.